Hi, my name is Darisia Wilkinson and I'm a PhD student at Clemson University. Today I'll be talking a bit about how we could help the average person better understand mobile data sharing practices. I'll be presenting our work entitled Privacy at a Glance, the user-centric design of glanceable data exposure visualizations. What I plan to do today is first go over what we actually did in our study, then I will discuss the results of our work, and lastly, I'll discuss some of the steps that we could take going forward. Let's take a second to think about your interactions online. Every scroll and click we make generates data that is being collected by apps and shared with partners and other third parties. The problem is that the average user isn't aware of exactly what is being collected, how often data is being collected, and exactly who that data is being shared with. For Android users, this is a bit tricky since the risks are typically only shown at installation time. And to add to this, prior work has shown that people don't always read or fully understand permissions. And even if they do understand them, they don't always have granular control over how apps collect and share their personal data. So we end up with situations like this where people have to blindly trust that developers will do what they said they would do. But is there a way we could watch the watcher? To address this problem, we first acknowledge that the solution has to have a few characteristics so that it doesn't feel flat out creepy and overwhelming. So we set out to have a solution that is A, personalized, noticeable, but not bothersome. And of course, that it enhances users' understanding of real-time data sharing practices. The goal of presenting warnings or notices to users about their privacy is to influence their behavior. If users are warned about apps that engage in unwanted information sharing, they might restrict permissions or even remove those apps altogether. The CHIP model or the Communication Human Information Processing model gives insight into how people process information in terms of noticing it, understanding what is presented, and determining its significance if an action is needed or not. Prior work has shown that warnings such as push notifications can be intrusive and users may ignore them over time due to habituation. So users may not be sufficiently motivated to access any in-app visualizations. To resolve these possible downsides, our glanceable approach suggests the use of a background channel that allows the information to be unobtrusively but pervasively transmitted via the phone's screensaver or lock screen. Our designs are influenced by each stage of this framework, working to maintain attention, comprehension, influencing users' attitudes and beliefs, and ultimately their motivation. We set out to test our approach by answering three main research questions. First, we wanted to know if users were able to understand the purpose of the visualizations at first glance. If so, what contributed to or hindered their understanding? Secondly, we look at comprehension. So does a more prolonged inspection of the visualization increase users' understanding of data sharing practices? And if it does, what contributes to this or what serves as a roadblock to their comprehension? And lastly, we look at the presentation style. We wanted to see if participants had a preference for designs that were more application-centric, that is, designs that are focused on the app itself that's sharing the data, or if they were more inclined to designs that were data centric. So those would be designs that were focused on the information itself that was being shared. 
Next, I will review our designs. So these are the different design dimensions that we had. So designs vary based on the presentation style and the level of granularity. So for the presentation styles, we had information structured and either it was app-centric or data-centric. And we had four different types of granularity. So it could have been low, moderate, high, or very high. Uh, for instance, if a design was app-centric with low granularity, that would feature just the number of shares that was given. But if it was very high, it had more features. So it would tell you what was shared, how often that was shared, who it was shared with, and it would give you more insights into when that happened. So here we have an example of a design that is app-centric with low granularity. So here you can see the design is focused on the total number of shares. In contrast, we have a design here that is data-centric with moderate granularity. Here we could easily explore which data type is being shared with which app and how often that is being done. Next, we have a design that is app-centric with high granularity. Compared to the previous designs, low and moderate, this design shows which app is sharing what data type and when. The position here correlates to the relative time that data sharing would have last happened. And lastly, we have a design that has very high granularity and the information is structured in a data-centric way. So this design shows you what data type is being shared with what app, and it also shows exactly when that information is being shared. So this design gives you more visual indicators for temporal feedback that is at a higher level compared to the previous granularity levels. Now we will explore the procedures of the study. To test our designs, we set out to conduct usability testing. To start, we gave participants a brief introduction. Then each participant saw two designs. When they saw the designs, we employed the five second test. And this was done to test glanceability. How this works is participants would have been shown the design for a total of five seconds. Then they were asked a few questions that would have tested what they would have recalled. Next, we would have shown them these designs for a longer time, then asked them probing questions. And this would have been done for both designs that they would have seen. We recruited a total of 15 participants with 80% of the participants reported as having a non-tech background. Next, I'll discuss our results. As I mentioned before, the glanceability of the designs were observed at two times. During the five second test, where first impressions were collected, then at the second stage, where participants were allowed a longer inspection time of about two minutes. A recurring principle that participants seemed to place emphasis on was the need to support the abstraction of data, which would enable them to perceive and process information in a quick way with minimal cognitive effort. Here we found that the preferred level of for glanceability was a moderate level of granularity. If the granularity was too low, it was good in the sense that you could quickly understand what was happening. But if it was too high, then it was too much information and participants would not understand what would happen. At the moderate level, participants were able to capture necessary information that would help them to gather what's happening, 
without being overwhelming. Participants valued designs that were able to maintain their attention without the need for deep exploration. However, there seemed to be a trade-off. Designs with high granularity were preferred for deeper understanding or exploring when there was an actual concern. While participants were able to interpret the information in the more granular designs, some participants still opted for a design with less granular detail. Particularly, the information about the exact time the data sharing occurred was generally perceived as not that valuable. We found that the use of glanceable data exposure visualization supports users' engagement with and understanding of mobile apps' data sharing practices. When shown for the initial five seconds, the visualizations maintain participants' attention as they intuitively attempted to decode the, meeting, the meaning of the presented information. Participants were able to accurately describe the purpose of the visualizations within those first five seconds, although the designs with the highest level of granularity proved to be too complicated for participants to decode even after prolonged inspection, let alone at first glance. Our analysis also suggests that the glanceability acts as a mediator between the granularity of the interface and user comprehension. We saw that after expression, a detailed understanding of the information, that's knowing who she had what type of information and when, that some participants consciously weighed the advantages of knowing this level of detail with the reduced glanceability of the interface. This is actually in line with the flow of the CHIP model in terms of attention and comprehension. And this helps us to better understand A, the trade-offs that users are willing to make, and B, the aspects of the design that contribute to users' understanding of these data exposures. With regard to the presentation style, we saw participants were a bit split. 47% of participants indicated that they prefer a design that's structured in a way that's more app-centric versus 40% of participants who indicated they preferred one that was more data-centric. Then we saw 13% of participants who said it kind of just depends on the context. What was interesting in people's preferences for the presentation styles wasn't necessarily their rationale for choosing different design aspects, but it was their motivation and how they thought about privacy that actually differed. The participants who preferred more app-centric designs had relational boundaries as they were more concerned about entities violating their trust. So these people, they were more motivated to investigate which entities showed activities that were aligned with their expectations around usage and sharing versus people who had preferences for data-centric information structures. These participants had stronger boundaries around the different types of content, regardless of who was actually receiving the data. For these participants, monitoring the flow of data was more important and they had a greater emphasis on content-based control. It's important to note that even participants recognize that this does not have to be displayed on a screensaver. There could be alternative ways of using different background channels as long as participants are aware of what's going on and they have actionable insights about what to do if something is alarming. To recap, some of the major takeaways and insights that were gathered were one, less can be more. Regarding the glanceability and understanding of the interface, providing less granular information could also be more informative. This happens because users are able to abstract more data at a glance and in that way, the information is easier to consume. 
And secondly, people's preferred structure of information has less to do with the design of the interface and more to do with how they conceptualize privacy. So it depends on whether they value relational or content privacy boundaries. Next, I'll describe some of the steps that we could use going forward and how this could be applied for different stakeholders. First, develop attention sustaining but meaningful notifications. Here it's important to strike a balance between simplicity and novelty. Helping users to quickly identify new risks is always important, but you have to balance between avoiding notification overload. Next, consider personalized and adaptive designs. This may be better aligned with users' need for customization to promote those aha moments and maintain the comprehension stage in the C model. It's equally important to consider the impact of the chosen channel and user's motivation. Apps that require access to unfamiliar channels may be perceived as suspicious to users, especially if you're using channels such as a screensaver that they may not be used to third-party apps requesting that. As such, solutions released from platform developers may be seen as more trustworthy. And last but not least, I would like to thank my co-authors for all of their hard work throughout this process. Haritosh, Moses, Jing, Arwa, Jessica, Pam, and of course, my advisor, Bart. And thank you for listening.